appreciate y'all again. It is a blessing. Praise the Lord. Uh, the sermon tonight, we're going to be in Proverbs and John. Proverbs and John. We've got one verse out, Proverbs, and then we're going to go to John 11, and we're going to be there a while. So, but uh, Proverbs 1 and 33, the first chapter of Proverbs, 33rd verse. And it says, Lord, Lord, bless us. Bless the Lord. Thank you. And it says in Proverbs 1 33, But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Now, hear that tonight. Whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. You know, we need to hearken unto the Lord. Right. It's not only hearing the Lord, but it's following his directions. It's not only following his directions, but it's being loyal to him. When you hearken to song, that means you're drawn to it. That means you're eager to obey and listen. That means you're, 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 you're just waiting, just waiting. You know, I'm waiting. Here I am. I'm waiting, Lord. I'm hearkening, hearkening unto the Lord. And when you and I hearken unto God, we're going to dwell safely. And we're going to be quiet from the fear of evil. I ain't worried about death. I ain't worried about the evil. I'm not worried about this world. I'm not worried about death. Preach. I heard a preacher friend say, "You want to know if you want to know someone's truly saved or not? Start talking to them about death. See how antsy they get about dying." Amen. Right there's a flag. Right there's a flag. I'm not saying we got a death wish. I ain't saying that. I ain't saying that we should. Oh, just hope pack it in tomorrow. They ain't want to say it. But if you say you, there should be some kind of knowledge, some kind of peace, some kind of blessed assurance. Hey, I'm in. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm in. Right. Amen. Amen. So I, you know, go be quiet from the fear of evil. Go hearken. Go dwell safely. Go be quiet from the fear of evil. Let's look at John 11. We're going to be bouncing around a little bit. Go read most of the chapter. Go bounce around a little bit. And uh, John 11, the first verse, now, now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and his, her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. We go back into Proverbs. Here it is. Here it is. Mary, the sisters, is like, hey, Lord, Lord, they're hearkening unto the Lord. Right. They know where to go. And the Lord's saying, there's going to be, there's something that's going to glorify God. Now, it says, well, in the Proverbs, it says that we shall be quiet from the fear of evil. It did not say that evil would be taken from our sight. It didn't say evil would be taken from our presence. It says that we shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Okay? Here's Jesus talking to the sisters like, listen, this sickness is not unto death. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. If you skip down into the 11th verse, and it says in John 11, 11, it says, These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking the rest in sleep. Then Jesus said, listen to this, then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Now there's a whole lot of context here that I've not studied through. There's context here that I do wonder about. But when Jesus was like, you know what? 
It's like, I know Lazarus is dead. Let's go to him. Right. Now, at that point, you have to think that his loved ones and that his friends is like, Lazarus is dead. Why should we go? If Lazarus is dead, I mean, what more can we do? Right. You know? Logic's going to kick in. If, if, if Lazarus is dead, then should we be doing something else here? But Jesus is like, we're going to go. Nevertheless, we're going. You have to think about, there's Mary crying, hearkening unto Jesus. Lazarus is sick. Here there is, it's like, Jesus said, I was, hey, Jesus, hey, Lazarus is dead. He's telling them this. Tom, the 16th verse, then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto the fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he lay in the grave four days already. Now, I know I blew by that 16th verse, but you talk about pack mentality. You talk about pack mentality. Well, Lazarus is dead. Why don't we just join him? Huh. You see that in church. You see that in ministries. You'll see that in moves. You'll see that there'll be certain things that'll go through and it'll be like, we can do what they did at that church. And we can do the exact same things that they did. And we can just follow in their steps. You see, here Thomas is thinking one direction. And Jesus says, we know totally different plans. Now I'm here to tell you tonight we've all talked about we've got some hardships, we've got some sufferings, we've got some things we're going through we've got some, hey, we got them. And if we look at them it's like, this can be overwhelming, this can be a struggle this can be a hardship, and it rightfully so. Rightfully so for us, it can be a hardship for us, it can be challenging for us, it can be difficult. But I want to encourage you tonight that the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Great I Am, is with us. Amen. And when Jesus is with us, praise God, miracles can happen. When Jesus is with us, we're going to be quieted from the fear of evil, which is back in Proverbs. We're going to hearken unto him. We're going to dwell unto him, Kevin. And praise God, we ain't going to be absent from evil. We're, we'll still see it. We'll still be in the presence of it in this sin sick world. But there's going to be a hedge. You see, Thank you, Lord. the great the great shepherd is amongst us. Praise God. He's going to protect us. And it's like in the 17th verse, he knows he's already great four days already. Now, Bethany was nigh in Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. We've got professional funeral goers right here in the Gospels. Right. All right? You ever seen these people? People get grieving, and they just want to grieve with you. They're professional grievers. Okay? They like misery. They like hardships. They like, here they come. <laughs> But woe is me, bunch. They're all over them. It says, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Now, we can stop there for a second. There is some weight in what Jesus just said. Your brother's going to rise again. I think sometimes we use words like love and friendship and peace and, and, and mercy and grace, and we speak the words but I think sometimes we don't know the full weight of the words. Amen. You think about the peace God's giving you. You think about the mercy God's giving you. Yeah. You think about the grace God's giving you. You think about the love of God. You think about precious salvation. You think about being forgiven and washed in the blood. 
We speak of these things. But there's times I really don't think we know the weight of the words. And here's Jesus like, let us rise again. Just like he plainly said, Lazarus is dead. He plainly says, your brother will rise again. Right. There is no, there is no uh, uh, fluffing around. There ain't no long speech. Jesus very direct. Telling them what's going on. Martha trying to be nice. I, in my eyes, Martha said unto him, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And then Jesus, being Jesus, praise God, Jesus, we love you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection mm -hmm. and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Mm -hmm. Praise God tonight. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, you talk about weight words. You talk about heavy words. But if Jesus is the resurrection. Mm -hmm. There's only one resurrection, and that is Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's only one getting up off the dead, and that's Jesus. There's only one rise again, and that's Jesus. There's only one, praise God, triumph, praise God, and his name's Jesus. And he plainly tells her, Kevin, he plainly says, I am the resurrection Amen. and the life. And he's asking, do you believe? Do you believe? In my studies, in my journey in this life, being in this Christian walk, the words believe grows more and more every day. Mm -hmm. Every day. Do you believe his word? Do you believe his spirit? Do you believe the call? Do you believe he's got a purpose for you? Do you believe in that walk, that highway of holiness, that road of righteousness? Do you believe in these things? Because I think if you truly believe in something, you're going to dedicate your life to that. You're going to, that's going to be a call to action. You're going, you're going to base your walk and your purpose in the thing that you believe. Right. Amen. I believe I'm a pastor of this church, therefore I show up and preach. I believe I'm not my wonderful Sarah's husband. I'm playing the role of her husband. I'm my dear brother James's brother. Praise God. That's my brother. I'm playing that role. Why? I believe in those things. I believe in them wholeheartedly. How much more so should we believe in the resurrection power? That sin forgives action. The mercy, the abundant grace that is Jesus Christ. And he's sitting there and he's like, do you believe us thou this? 27 verse says, she said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had said so, when and when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master come and calleth for thee. I think old Mary, I think she just she just rationalized. You ever rationalize things? Well, I know this happened. Well, I guess it happened because of this, this, and that. Well, I know this occurred because, well, well, things will happen, or you know, that we're in the fallen world, or we got free will. We'll rationalize a lot of stuff. Yes. Martha's rationalizing, and she's gonna go to Mary. The Master cometh to call for thee. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus said, take ye away the stone, Martha. Now we'll skip down to the 38th verse. Forgive me. Again, the 38th verse. John 11, 38. Jesus therefore again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. And the 39th verse says, Jesus said, take ye away the stone, Martha. The sister of him that was dead saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. And guess what word's about to pop up in that 40th verse? Believe. Jesus said unto her, I said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Do you believe tonight? My brothers in Christ, do you believe in tonight? Do you believe in the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings? Do you believe in the great I Am? 
Do you believe yeah. that he can do something marvelous and miraculous in your life every day? Do you believe in the one? Praise God, gave it up for you and I. Do you believe in the one? His promises are yea and amen. Do you believe in the one who's going to come back for us one day? Do you believe in the one that said he's gone to prepare a place for you and I? Do you believe in the one, praise God, that give us this beautiful road book, this beautiful map, this wonderful word to live our daily life? Do you believe tonight? Oh, I believe. Praise God. I think we believe together. I think i got a bunch of believers. Praise God. We're going to believe the Lord Jesus Christ is going to fulfill everything he ever said and promised. Praise God. And he's looking at him. He's like, listen, I understand. Martha, I know. Martha, I know. This is like he said in that 40th verse, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou should see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Now I want to tell you, you talk about a faith walk. You talk about a faith walk. I tell you what, you start thanking God. Lord, I know you hear my prayers. And God, I thank you for hearing my prayers. I thank you for blessing me today. I thank you for giving me strength. I thank you for touching my body. I thank you for giving me free will. And my free will, I am choosing to worship and serve you, Jesus, because you did so good to me, Lord Jesus. I do believe, praise God, if we just get a little bit more thankful. Oh, my. Here's Jesus giving thanks. You know, they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Mm-mm-mm. I wonder what they were thinking, James. I wonder what they were thinking. I wonder if it was a lot like salvation. There was something inside them that would be like, I'm going to believe Jesus more than I'm going to believe what Martha's saying. I wonder what they were thinking when they were pushing that stone. Oh, I wonder what they were thinking. And it says there in the 42nd verse, And I knew that thou heardest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Praise God. He cried with a loud voice. A loud voice. Have you ever stood for something that you believed in? Have you ever took a stand for something that you, yourself, was like, I know it's right, I know it's true, I know it's holy, I know it's righteous. Neighbors might not like it. There may be some church folks that might not like it. There may be some news people that might not like it. There may be some lawmakers that might not like it. But I'm going to stand on his word, right. and I'm going to cry that thing out. Amen. Praise God. There's one way to heaven, and that's Jesus. He's the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the great I am. They ain't 80 some ways to heaven, praise yeah. God. They ain't two genders, praise God. Yeah. He made them he and she, yeah. praise God. And he made he and she to get married, praise God. Yeah. That's what he did, that's praise right. the Lord. And you can't separate Jesus from God. If God said it in Genesis, Jesus was there in the midst. Jesus was there. Amen. It's the word of Christ. Boy, this society don't want it. No. This world don't want it. They're pulling every which way. They're pulling every which way. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to stand up with a loud voice. I'm going to believe in Jesus. I'm going to believe in the Lord. I'm going to believe in my salvation that he gave. Praise God. Praise God. He paid the price. I thank you, Jesus. I'm going to believe in Jesus. But he cried out with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. And the 44th, the 44th verse. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. Hear that tonight. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Mm -mm -mm. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. My goodness. My goodness, why am I preaching this tonight? Because I think in ourselves, in our own selves, there's some Lazarus in us somewhere. There's a forgotten ministry. 
There's something I used to do. There's something that I used to put aside. There's something, praise the Lord, that used to have life. But that thing ain't there like it used to. I hope Jesus, I pray in Jesus, I believe in Jesus. He's going to walk into all our lives. And he's going to cause that thing to rise again. It might be your joy. It might be your hope. It might be your peace. It might be healing. It might be deliverance. It might be a ministry. It might be a gift that you, you've been hiding under, under a candle, under a bed, trying to hide it away. You might be running from something. I don't know what it is. Pray. And I'm believing tonight. I want that spirit of the Lord to come rising up in each and every one of us. And I want that spirit of the Lord to come rising up in you and I. And I come forth. Come forth. Come forth. Let him loose him and let him go. Loose your joy and let it go. Loose your peace and let it go. Loose that healing. Loose that deliverance. Loose that, I'm going to blame on Jesus and not what the doctor tells me or what the neighbor tells me or what the boss tells me or what the news tells me or what the neighbor says. I'm going to believe in Jesus. Amen. And if nothing else, loose your faith and let it go. Loose your faith. Loose, loose that faith. Start believing. I know the Lord's going to do something good. I know the Lord's going to bless some folks. I know the Lord's going to bless me. I'm going to walk in blessed. I'm going to walk out blessed. Praise God. I know he's with us. Praise the Lord. Thank I'm going to be an ambassador of God. I'm going to be an ambassador for Christ. And I know if I'm a good ambassador, he must be a royal priesthood. And there ain't no royal priesthood that's going to halfway do their ambassadors. You see, Jesus wants you to get prepared. Jesus wants you to look good. Jesus wants you to have the knowledge. Jesus wants you to stand out on faith and be that one that steps out. The ambassador is the one that goes and greets. The ambassador is the one that says, come meet the king. Come meet the king. Let me take you to the great I am. Let us be a great ambassador. Praise God tonight. It says that in that 45th verse, read it again, that many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. There's that word again, Kevin, believe. What can we believe in? What can we believe in? You know, the Bible says that all things work together for the good to them that are called. Amen. And to me, <laughs> salvation is a call. Because it's a call. Get out of hell. It's a call. Let's be righteous. It's a call. You don't have to be in your sins anymore. You see? And these things will work together. It might not look good at times. It might not seem good at times. I have struggles. I have heartaches. I have difficulties. There's times I'm like, Lord, is this where we need to be? I pray that prayer. But that sun comes up the next day. There's joy in the morning, praise God. There's peace. There's hope. There's mercy. There's just, I'm going to do this one more time. Praise God. I'm going to get up one more time. I'm going to sing one more song. I'm going to raise my hand one more time. I'm going to preach another message one more time. I'm going to sing a song. I'm going to clap a hand. I'm going to shake a hand. I'm going to pat the back and hug the neck one more time. Amen. Because that one more time might be that person's might be that last time. Can we believe on these things? So let's look back one more time in Proverbs. Proverbs 133. But whosoever, but whoso, excuse me, Proverbs 133, but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quieted from fear of evil. We can be quieted. Even, even Martha and Mary and those, those that saw, they believed. Many believed that day. Mm -hmm. They were quieted from their, oh, I thought Lazarus was dead and never coming back. They were quieted from, man, I don't know Jesus. Man, he might not be able to fulfill this. They were quieted from any doubts right. of knowing that he's the Lord, 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 King, King's the great I am. And I'm here tonight, and I want to send this message out to you. 
that your fears be quieted, that, that, that the things that are bothering you be quieted, and that, that you live in peace with the Lord and that you dwell in Him. Because He's with us and He's going to take care of all these things.